Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this uh, special meeting of the Wayne Westland Board of Education. It's Monday, September 12th, 6 p.m. We're going to begin our e meeting this evening with the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag, led by Superintendent Dr. John Dignan. Ms. Hines, roll call vote, please. Our roll call. Where's my pen? Okay, Mr. Buckaloo? Present. Ms. May? Present. Dr. Weaver? Present. Mr. Neal? Present. Ms. Hines, present. President Cox? Present. And Albrick is excused. Let the record show 6 0. Thank you, Ms. Hines. Let the record reflect Mr. Albrecht is an excused absence as he is chairing a charitable event this evening. The next item uh, on the agenda, 139.23, is recognitions and presentations. Dr. Dignan. Thank you, President Cox. Good evening, uh, community. Real quick introductions of our school board here. Uh, Trustee Neal, Trustee Weaver, President Cox, Trustee uh, Hines, Secretary, Secretary Hines, uh, Trustee May, Fisherman. and Trustee uh, Buckaloo. Real quick, too, I, I want to uh, introduce and, and thank our uh, mayors of both Westland and Wayne for being here. I'm going to ask that uh, Mayor Wow introduce people from the city of uh, Westland, if he would. Good evening, everyone, and, and uh, good evening, school board and, and superintendent. So on behalf of the city of Westland joining us in the audience today, if I miss you, raise your hand afterwards, but on behalf of the Westland City Council, we have our city council president pro tem, Mike Lando. We see uh, police chief Jeff Jedrizic, and the city of Westland's facilities director, Vic Barra. Anybody else from Westland? All right, thank you, superintendent. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Wild. Uh, mayor Racy uh, is the mayor of the city of Wayne, and if you would give some introductions to uh, some of your people, please. This is our city manager. This is our city manager, uh, Lisa Nosarini. I'm going to go ahead and let her, let her go ahead and introduce her staff. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. Good evening. Tonight we have with us, uh, joining us, Ryan Strong, Police Chief, City of Wayne. Lori Going, Community Development Director and DDA Director for the City of Wayne. Lori has a lot more titles than that, but I can only fit that one in. Uh, Jeremy Schneider, Deputy Fire Chief and uh, Fire Marshal for the City of Wayne. Catherine Sample, Finance Director and Treasurer for the City of Wayne. And Jody Woolock, um, the Wayne Library Director. Thank you very much. Right now, we're going to start the presentation. Uh, before I do, I just want to... I'm going to go to citizens and comments first. Okay. The next item on the agenda, ladies and gentlemen, 140.23 is citizens' comments. This is the portion of the meeting reserved for citizens wishing to address the board on items which appear on tonight's agenda. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the board on agenda items at this time? Okay, moving on to 141.23, superintendent. Thank you, President Cox. Uh, real quick, uh, before I get into the presentation, I just want to thank our... Uh, the cities that feed our school district. Uh, when you look at the word community, within it is the word unity. And since I've been in Wayne Westland uh, schools, I've been amazed by the, all of the cities, the cities of uh, Westland, Wayne, Inkster, and Canton, and, and the support that they've shown. So if we could real quick, I, I'd like to give a round of applause to all our city mayor, city council, and, and city workers. We talked about this summer of coming together and kind of rallying around different goals that are important to us as a school community as well as community at large. And the five themes were equity, literacy, financial literacy, health and wellness, and community engagement. Um, literacy 
is one of the most important academic skills because it really is the spine that holds all the subjects together. Our kids need to learn to read. Financial liter literacy is important because again, the planning uh, of students' futures as well as our community members plays a big part. And then the health and wellness, especially uh, with what's happened the last couple of years is very important, especially with a lot of our, uh, the things that our community's been dealing with. And then community engagement, just getting our residents to feel connected and getting involved not only in our schools, but also our cities. The next one is just talking about some different things that we've done uh, around equity. Um, just the social emotional curriculum, our college and career readiness, our free breakfast and lunch for all students, and our career technical center has kind of set us down this path. Uh, in some of our cities, they've had a DEI commission, diversity officers, free back to school events, and then our libraries offer free access to computer, Wi-Fi, and hotspots. And this played itself out during COVID-19, especially with our community and some of our students and families. Flip into literacy. One of our district goals, and, and this is something that's established by the state of Michigan, is to have every child read by the third grade. Right now, we are in the process of building and benchmarking pre-kindergarten through second grade, uh, different benchmarks and academic skills that our kids are gonna need. We have EL support in, in, in our school, and again, we established the program last year and it's flourishing right now. So again, I credit everybody that has had a hand in that. We also have, as a district, celebrity readers. So I'm gonna ask people sitting right in, in the crowd right now, sometime during the year, we're gonna call on you to come read to our classrooms, especially our elementaries. Our kids really enjoy it. I wanna thank the cities, the libraries, for offering the resources for preschool, school age and adults our summer reading programs that our families take advantage of, the little free libraries in the parks, and then the educational learning lab at Wayne Youth and, and Family Services has been paramount for our district. The financial literacy, our classes that focus on soft skills like budgeting, paid internship programs, FAFSA and scholarship workshops. I want to thank the cities again for the resources that they provided for rent and utility assistance, events at the library, tech assistance events, referrals to Wayne Metro for financial assistance and coaching, and educational programs. So we're very grateful for that partnership. The next one is health and wellness. The district, one of the big initiatives, and I want to thank our school board, is Carousalis. We kind of brought Kirasalis last year, and it's really paid itself in, in, in full uh, with how many families and, and kids have been able to access it. The core in the community involves joint efforts around mental health support in our schools. Um, Big Green Gardens is one example. And, and, and again, I want to thank our operations team because these should be functional next spring. Our elementary sports, probably has been one of the greatest SEL things we've done as a school district. This Saturday, we will have 1,500 kids that will participate in NFL flag, which is incredible. When we started, uh, we had a few hundred. So to have 1,500 kids that are gonna be participating is incredible. Um, I wanna thank uh, our, our kind of our, our membership, especially with the, the police department. We have SROs at both of John Glenn and, and Wayne Memorial High School. We have uh, fire safety events for all of our schools during the course of the year. Uh, after September 28th, the majority of our staff will be LS trained. Um, the rec recreation programs for students and seniors can be found throughout our community. Um, the healthy Wayne Westland partner uh, cooking classes and things like that have paid a huge, huge role. I wanna thank the city of Westland for the crossing guard program that has been, uh, we've had a lot of compliments from our community on it. So again, these are all things of ways that we're partnering both as a city and, and, and as school community. Community engagement, just quickly, 
um, sporting events, celebrity reader, community cup challenge, which is going to be new for uh, next year. Uh, in the community cup challenge, we're going to uh, have cities and, and businesses within the cities uh, adopt and sponsor our schools. It will be uh, kind of a, a kickoff to our back to school fair, which saw close to uh, 4,000 families take part in this year. So the community cup challenge is gonna be something that we're gonna rally around and no offense, we're gonna kinda compete, have the city of Wayne compete with Westland to see who can uh, kinda raise more for uh, some of our schools. Um, again, the HBCU fair that we're gonna have November 2nd, it was huge last year, so we had to move the venue this year. It was at Career Tech last year. It'll be at John Glenn High School this year. We're looking for different ways to partner with uh, our, our cities. A again, some of the things that I want to talk about, what they've done and we partnered in, Veteran Day ceremonies, park cleanups, Cruising US 12, library events, senior walk, movie nights, Memorial Day ceremonies, community gatherings, policing meetings, the fire department, uh, pancake breakfast, and community theater. These are just to name a few, but again, it, it's, it's through this partnership that strengthens our schools. I'm gonna end it on that. As my dad said, don't fall in love with your own voice. I don't plan on doing it, so I'm gonna end it right there. And, and, and again, I, I thank you for uh, your time. We had a late arrival. I wonder, uh, ma'am, if you might introduce yourself to everyone. Thank you and welcome. Do you want to have discussion? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to give it to you. I'll open it up for discussion. What I'd like to do at this time, if it's okay, is open this up to discussion and, and just kind of have conversations about different partnerships that we can build on and things that we can do to come together. I'd like to begin by, uh, by making a comment. And a, couple, a couple of years ago when, uh, when Dr. Dignan first came to the school district, one of the conversations that we had is uh, we would like to involve the children in the community with our school all year round, not, not just in the winter. And it's our belief that uh, the school district certainly has the resources to create a program for kids to be involved in any manner of things, whether it's vocational or sports or uh, mentorship. We'd, we'd like to get them involved. We think that they do better when they have an ongoing relationship with, uh, with the school district. We'd like to promote that. We'd like to uh, promote the kind of uh, relationship with their parents and guardians so that they recognize the school as being a safe place for kids to be. And, and we would like to foster that, whether that entails relationships with the cities where maybe the city can handle administrative responsibilities that the school can't because it's closed in the summertime, but uh, that takes advantage of the resources of the school. And I know Tony Spizek somewhere. Tony, just don't listen to this part. Everything here was paid for by the citizens uh, in the communities. Uh, it all belongs to them. And to, to sit vacant all summer when kids could be enjoying it and, and they could be coached, they could be mentored. Uh, frankly, it, it's a waste of those resources because those resources uh, deteriorate whether you know, someone's swimming in the pool or not. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to have a relationship where uh, the, school, the school buildings uh, in the district are locations where kids can go, safe places, maybe provide them uh, health, uh, food, the, the kind of uh, event that can keep them busy in the summer with productive activities. And we're constantly looking for ways to, to do that, to bring, to bring them in. And I don't know how we accomplish that, but I know that the communities that the district serve all have exceptional leadership and we all have a great relationship with one another. It seems that if there was any time to do that, this would be a great time to do it and the beneficiaries of course are the are the children so I'm gonna jump in and piggyback on that one thing uh, that we're gonna launch this summer and that we're gonna need all the city's help is 
We have a summer internship program through uh, Representative Tlaib. Uh, she allocated uh, quite a, a bit of, of money for us, and we're going to launch the program this summer. We're asking that our, our kids can possibly do some of the internships with city government and a lot of different kind of uh, opportunities within there in the, the city itself. So I'm going to throw that out there as well. And then my last one is if we could try to partner with the Parks and Rec this summer, um, EMU and some of our other partners are willing to jump aboard and have some summer programs at some of our parks. So for some of our students that might not be able to get to uh, the high schools and things like that, have a place to go and, and we know that they can have enrichment opportunities, games and, and some summer fun as well as being fed there. So something else to think about as we kind of move forward. And I would like to also talk about transportation. Um, recently we were able to add um, Annapolis Park to our school district. It's a school of choice. So we have transportation for them as well. And uh, recently we just you know, passed all of our union contracts. So we increased the pay for a lot of our staff. And um, we hired some additional bus drivers and nice, reasonable pay. So um, I'm pretty excited about what we're doing in this district, You know, making sure that kids can come to school safe. Um, and I wanted to add something too about maybe we can all get together as like the council, um, some of our legislators to do a tour of the school district with all the new bond work and projects that we've completed. And I think that would be a good idea if we can pick a day and we can all get together and we can kind of tour some of these buildings. Cause, um, you guys, Mr. Spizak, you guys did a really wonderful job, you know, getting the bond passed and all the lovely work that you've done. So would you guys think about putting that on the table, having like a tour of the district where we can have like our, like the mayors of the different cities, Wayne, Westland, the council, our representatives to do a tour to see how our buildings are looking after our construction project? I guess I'm, I'm interested in knowing what it is that the cities think uh, if, if the school, they could partner with the school district on, what would it be? What can we do to... Uh, to improve services in the city or offer more through the city? Is there something we can do to help you? Mayor. Uh, thank you, President Cox. I'll, I'll take the first swing at that if you don't mind. So just a couple of things. First of all, I'll start off with what the superintendent said about internships. You know, back back in a time, uh, you know, the, the school co-op programs or whatever with, with communities, it just that was just a way of life. And then at some point, you know, those programs just, just stopped. Um, in the city of Westland, we, we would work with you on, on co-ops or internships, um, starting at whatever grade you guys feel comfortable with. Obviously, transportation is part of that, but um, it's it's an opportunity. I know that the school district is uh, spending a lot of resources on career technical training, and you know, working in city government, um, there there's a career path for for that as well. And governments have a hard time uh, recruiting people and hiring people. And, it, and it, at the very least, it's it's a great place to uh, to learn marketable skills. And so, um, in the city of Westland, we've got the infrastructure in place to, to work with you on that program. And, and we can, I know we've already started some of those conversations, but I think we could we could go a long way. Obviously, transportation plays into that. Um, President Cox, your 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 uh, comment is about. The school assets, the school buildings, the city buildings, the city parks, the city, you know, the school recreational opportunities. Um, I'm a taxpayer of our community too, and, and, and I, I think that I've always been frustrated when I look at all these assets that we have in the city, at the city level and at the school level, that most of the time you don't see any action out there. Uh, we've got great assets. The school district has uh, incredible assets, and, and the community has supported those through the the sinking bond millages, the city of Westland, we, we pumped tons of federal and state and local money in all of our recreational assets. So, yeah, we could work together to get those assets, you know, utilized more by the public. Uh, I think, first of all, I think that's good governance. I think that's what people expect from their government. I think they'll be surprised because they, they, they think that, I can't believe we haven't done this in the past, but, you know, we have baseball fields and football fields and soccer fields and the school district has tennis courts and pools and soccer fields all of that stuff the community should be out there every single night and we got to figure out a way to 
you know, either with our Parks and Recreation Department, working with the schools, working with some of our local youth groups. Um, I would love to, to, to really build on that because as we talk about creating a place where people want to live and people want to raise families, that's just the secret sauce that just goes along with it. So the more that we can offer that and the more that we can uh, work together to make that happen, um, I think we're pretty exciting. And as you mentioned, I think we have a great um, cohesiveness between the school board and, and the surrounding communities. And I think we have an opportunity now that while all of our assets are, are being improved and maybe at, at some of their, uh, the best shape they've been in a long time, what better chance right now to, to utilize it and figure out how to do that. So. Um, I'd be excited to work with you at any level, at recreation or the, the co-op programs. Um, our building trades partnership is one of our, our I think, our greatest long-term successes between the school district and the city. And uh, we've been trying to build upon that. And so we look forward to working with you. I had a chance today to meet with our council president, uh, Jim Hart, and our council president, Pro Tem, Mike Mondo. I know they're, they're big supporters. Of, uh, you know, looking for additional ways to strengthen these partnerships. So I think today's meeting is, is a great first step towards making some of that happen. You know, Mayor, you, you mentioned uh, resources. In case everybody uh, isn't on the same page, I, I think the, the school district by necessity was a little bit protective of their resources while we were going through a 40-year period where we were making less money than every other school district around here. And so there's a, there's a tendency to, you know, use a half a sheet of paper towels, uh, not a full sheet, and that just runs through everything that we have. Uh, that has changed. We're resourced as well as surrounding school districts, and that changes our fortunes in terms of what we're able to do. You know, notwithstanding the last two years, when you look at flag football alone, going from zero to 1,500 kids in two years, this, is, this tells me that the community is thirsty for this. The young people are thirsty for mentorship and coaching and teamwork. And it, it's kind of like it always was, up, up to the parents to, to put the play dates together. And, and I've always thought that uh, now we have, a, we have a great opportunity with the synergy of this relationship for, to be able to do this throughout the district and take advantage of that. And, 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 what Dr. Dignan said to me a couple of years ago when we first began having this conversation was, uh, these kids that are involved at night, involved during the summer with a school district, academically just perform better. They're, they have a relationship with the school. It's not a burden, but it's rather a joy. And, and it, we should be able to build on that with, with cooperation. Other thoughts? Sure. Mayor, Mayor Racing. Thank you. Thank you, President Cox. Um, I think that, you know, that this would be great. I do have some concern for my city, not that we don't want to be involved, just our resources aren't the same as, as the other cities. So, I mean, I think that's a conversation I'd like to have you and the superintendents to see what we can do. But uh, there's definitely, we, our staff is much smaller. And so we got, sometimes it's just, you've got one guy doing whatever it is. And so it's a lot harder to do the, some of those things. But I do think that there's things that we can do as a community. And I do think that there's things that we can do, our residents are looking for, like you're saying, it may be just a little bit different how this would implement from our city versus uh, other communities. For example, I know right now that there is someone that's on television that's a Wayne Memorial graduate. He, he, you guys gave him a distinguished alumni in, in Wayne for Wayne Memorial, he lives in town now. I could see him wanting to do some type of community theater and needed a place to be able to do that. What greater place to, to be able to use Wayne Memorial? Um, I also see, like with, uh, that we could use your guys' help with career tech. We have a park at Wood Park that needs attention. We need a roof put on. We need a pavilions you know, to help us get to that point we don't have those same resources, but if we had some of those, that, that resource coming back to help us from within, we could do some great things. And we really could, could utilize um, those types of things. Uh, you mentioned open the schools. I, you know, we have our recreation center. We don't have a rec, rec department any longer because we couldn't afford to keep that going. Now, I'm not saying that that's not important in our communities because I know it is. 
So we got to just try to rethink what that looks like together. But their need is definitely there. We see in the rec so we sold our rec center to the Hype Recreation Center. They've got our old ice arena filled with basketball courts. It's packed with kids. There could be basketball tournaments going across this this area. We could be doing some really cool things, but we got to think outside the box, and I think we got to bring some more people to the table because our, our community works a little different. We, we're using some different community resources to make our things happen. Um, it, we're just it's just the way it is for us, and we just got to think outside the box, but I don't think anything can't be done. It's just a matter of figuring out how it can be done. For example, you talked about working in the schools. Both of our cities, for Wayne and West End, I, I know that Canton has something well, we could really use access to the pool. I mean, we don't have a swimming pool. Our kids don't know how to swim, <laughs> you know, and the pools are sitting right here. I think that's a great idea. Why not, you know, utilize the resources that the taxpayers paid for and find ways to be able to, to bring those back. But let's, you know, let's talk about that, how we can make that work and then put up the right structure. And together, I think great things can happen. And at the risk of uh, violating Dr. Dignan's dad rules about talking too much, the, the issue of the different uh, resources in the communities that the school district serves is also an issue. And, and I don't know how we deal with that. I can tell you that, uh, I don't know if we talked about the security, or we were talking about Wayne County, and just put it out there. Yeah, we can. Uh, just to kind of shift gears a little bit, let you know where we're at. About six or seven weeks ago, maybe it was six weeks ago, I, uh, I, I had a meeting with Dr. Curtis Ivory, who's the chancellor of Wayne County Community College, and I told him that uh, members of the Board of Education in Wayne Westland and throughout the state of Michigan and the country are, just, are kind of sitting and praying that it isn't them next with violent acts on school property. And uh, frankly, that's no way to deal with this issue, is hoping it's not you. And for us, to, uh, for, us, for us to expect members of the Board of Education to have the security background that they need to make wise decisions. I told Dr. Ivory, our school district uh, is spending about $6 million in security infrastructure just in this bond issue. And to be perfectly frank, we're not totally convinced that the money we're spending is the best way to spend the money to get the security for it. We're not experts. Also, Dr. Dignan is not an expert, nor are members of his staff. And I said when a plane goes down, the FAA crawls all over that thing to find out what wire broke so they know to fix that wire in the future. But no such thing is done when a school violence issue happens, even though after it happens, it's pretty obvious to everybody in the community who the likely person was all along. It wasn't a surprise. I remember when I was a kid in school, I, I know that there were kids that had challenges. It wasn't a secret. And I said, somebody has to take a leadership role in this. And, you know, we have a fine, uh, uh, I'm, I'm a citizen of Westland, and we have a fine, outstanding police department in Westland, but what Westland's resources are different than the resources of other communities. So if we were to come up with any kind of uh, security protocol, one city would be more able to do it than another city. Well, that's, that, that's also not a solution to this. We have to have, first of all, we have to have, quality, we have to know that the direction that we're going in, in terms of our security, is really going to help the problem, really going to address the issue. And we need some leadership on it. And I was asking, you know, the the chancellor if he would help me take a take a, role, a leadership role in that. And in October, uh, I think the 23rd of October, the date isn't firm yet. There's going to be an event at the Ted Scott campus of Wayne County Community College, and it's going to involve the Michigan State Police, the Wayne County Sheriff, the police departments from the different uh, agencies served by our school district plus uh, school districts uh, such as Redford, Dearborn Heights, Taylor, Romulus, Canton are also going to be uh, invited to attend along with their administrators to have a wider conversation about this issue. And so here we are with the same issue that you brought up, Mayor Racy, with resources. One city being able to do something another city can't. That can't be a stumbler 
to us providing services to our kids. When you, when you get to my age, the only thing that's important is these kids. And we've got to do everything we can do for them. And if that means that the school district is the hub of this, I, I'm only one vote, but as far as I'm concerned, we need these kids in a relationship with this school district. And, and we have to make it available to everybody no matter where they live and no matter what school they go to. And I think that if that's true for security. It's certainly true for, for uh, recreational activities. Thoughts? Thank you. I'll touch on that for a second. So um, on December 9th last year, Plymouth Camp Schools had a lockdown. Um, there was a gun scene that somebody said, and it was, it was a five-hour lockdown that the kids were there. 25 police agencies showed up. Now, this is two weeks after what happened up in Oxford. But so what I want to just say along those lines is, it, it, um, and you might not know this, like you said, other police stations are showing up. The police departments are working um, to figure out how to do this. And I think because we, this is just after Oxford and we had so many agencies show up, it shows that there is care there and that there is movement there and they aren't just they aren't sitting. And, and that really should be led between the school district and the police and who works for us here in the city. And that's where your expertise is showing. And, and I saw some reports after that that just showed you know, the command center and who belongs to the command center and how the chain of command should go. And I think they did a great job. I mean, in that campus, there's 6,100 kids. So that's why it was a five-hour lockdown. They went um, classroom by classroom and basically patted down who they thought needed to be patted down and checked out students and things like that. So, they definitely seem to have a process to do this. So I think I would, um, I, I would tell you that that is moving. That's not standing still. You know, our police across all of our communities are working together. Um, that's also done through the Conference of Western Wayne, the group that works with the different 18 communities on Western Wayne. So um, I know our, our police departments would definitely, you know, talk to you about you know, some of the plans that have happened since then and what they're doing for safe schools. So that is one thing that's happening. I really welcome conversation about this from, from every angle because that's what hasn't happened. We need to have a conversation about it. And no question that the response to an, to an activity is, is overwhelming. I think by the time you're responding to something, you probably already missed the boat a couple, in a couple of ways. If something gets to that point, uh, and I don't know, I'm not an expert as I've already stated, but it seems to me that the opportunities were probably missed and I don't know why I, I will tell you that there's just two things that come to my mind right away is that there's no central authority for the region on this issue and not just here there's there is no police agency that is that has contacted the school district and said it we have to have a hard conversation about what you're actually facing and what we're going to do so that everybody knows that nobody's done that and how can they? They're, they're working every single moment that they're at work. This is a, this is a new and another thing. And there's not, there isn't even necessarily uh, the kind of communication that needs to occur. For instance, Wayne Westland is in all these different communities. The city of Westland Police Department isn't going to respond when, the, when the, the school district's in another community. So... There needs, to be, there needs to be a communication. And when I say respond, I don't mean respond after there's someone in a school with a gun. Everybody's showing up then. I'm talking about when whatever is developing that ends up like that is when we need, is when we need to be there. I spent 20 years in the insurance business before uh, uh, going into other lines of work. And one of the things in the insurance business when you have an, an incident and an incident is something that could have been a car accident, but it just wasn't. But all of the elements of mistake were there. There just wasn't any loss. There wasn't any damage. And an insurance company looks at an incident just as if it were a $20,000 loss because tomorrow it could be. So they look at everything like that. And when I was thinking about this problem, and, and I'll be perfectly frank, what I was thinking is, what is the Wayne Westland School District going to tell a mother who's lost her child that we didn't do anything two weeks uh, after the Oxford shooting occurs and we got over $20 million in the bank? What am I going to tell them? We didn't have the money? We do have the money. There's just no conversation. And even the conversation that's happening right now is the school district asking for it. I kind of thought a police agency should be here talking to us about it. 
So we have the resources to do things for these children. And uh, I don't want the fact that one city just doesn't have a lot of money right now to, for the kids that live in that city not to have the same advantage that another city might offer them. So, but, you know, the mayor even said, uh, I don't know when it was, a few weeks ago, Mayor, we were in an event, you were talking about the budget for the city of Westland and the budget for the school district. And uh, there are millions of dollars apart. And that doesn't mean that I, I want to throw money away, even if I could, I'm only one vote, but all of that money came from the citizens that we're trying to serve. So it seems to me that we just need to be, we need to do more work like this to try to get to something that, uh, that makes sense. Please. I won't hold this up. <clears throat> my father was an educator for 36 years. My father's been on the school board in the UP and he's been on the ISD for probably 27, 26 years now of, the, of that time frame. And we talk a lot about uh, the school and government. We cross a lot of our conversations between school and government because it doesn't happen enough. And I learn a lot from my father. My father learns a lot from me. We talk probably three, four, five times a week. There's been a separation for many years, and let's just, we've all tried, but there's been a separation between school and government for a very long time. That separation comes from this belief that everybody needs to remain in their corners. We all just need to be where we need to be. You're a school, we're a government. This is the federal government, this is the state. There's not a lot of conversation. I liken it to the Detroit Regional Chamber Conference. There's a lot of talking when people go up to the Chamber Conference, but once they cross the bridge and head back, or once they are down here, that conversation stops in a lot of ways. A lot of good discussion, a lot of great ideas. But I can, I can say that, and this is no knock against anybody, if we're going to truly change, there's got to be more conversation, there's got to be more communication. I believe in the seven years I've been at the city of Wayne, I've not seen a member of the um, council at any of our meetings. Not once. And I think that's a problem. And I think that's a problem because you're talking about this unity, you're talking about government, and you're talking about the school district working together. We're more than happy to attend, we're here. You told us to get here, we told us to be here, you asked us to be here, we're here. We supply information to you, we're here, we're here to talk, we're here to discuss. But I don't want to walk away from this after doing this work and working with Jenny and, and your group and not have any more conversation. Yeah, it's true, Wayne doesn't have the resources right now, but as the mayor said, there are things we can do outside of just resources. There are programs and things that we can work on together. But we also need to see your faces at our council meetings too. It would be great to see you there because I think that you capture an audience and we capture an audience. Ours are on cable, Westlands are on cable, Shurkans are on cable, and I think it'd be wonderful to see that as a first step, that unified team come together on behalf of the parents and children that we all serve. And have you tell us what's going on in the school district? What do you need from us? What has the city done well? What has the city not done well? And I think this dialogue needs to continue not once a year, but more often. So I welcome you, and I'm sure the mayor does, to come to a meeting anytime and present to us on where the school district is at. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Mayor, Mayor Wild. So, so just a couple of general things. So uh, I'm going to circle back to the first thing on recreation. Though. In Westland, we, we really appreciate the opportunity that the schools and the school board has given us uh, to take a look at uh, repurposing Marshall Middle School into a community center which would um, solve a lot of the problems that we talked about and offer recreational opportunities and uh, if that comes to fruition our, our vision is partnering with the YMCA which could um, in both in, in Westland, Wayne and Easter um, all three of our communities have small parks and recreation departments um, in Canton they have uh, they have a wonderful department and, um, that, that we're all kind of striving towards um, their leisure services are, to my, in my opinion, some of the finest in the state, if not the finest. But with our three communities, we have small parks and recreation departments. So by partnering with YMC, I think that we can start to create recreational opportunities and programming opportunities that will benefit residents in Westland, Wayne, and Easter. Um, and part of that could be utilizing some of the, you know, we're going to be able to do X amount at the YMCA and on the Marshall property, but perhaps that can be expanded out to some of the other school properties and some of the city properties for 
for programming and we mentioned the pools. Back to the school security thing. So <clears throat> I, I think with the makeup of our communities and the makeup of the district, we're always gonna struggle with what resources the, the cities can bring to the table. And, and when you look at just the size of our cities, um, they're, they're, all, they're, they're all totally different in the size of our departments. And even in Westland right now, we're understaffed in our department. We've got a lot of openings and we're trying to fill. So with that said, I, I, I don't think that the school district will be able to look to the police departments to, to solve their security issues. I, I think that the school district is going to have to make school security part of your operational budget, and then you've got to work with our school with our police departments on how do we augment that. Obviously, in the case of emergency, we're we're we're, we're the first responders. But on the day-to-day -day security of your buildings, why we we have a great relationship with our school resource officers. Um, even even that individual is tasked. You know, it's taxed to uh, try to cover the, the amount of space. At Westland City Hall, we, we, we use the private sector to, to provide security at City Hall you know, every day. And then obviously that's augmented by the Westland Police Department. So I think that as we figure out the security piece, like you mentioned, Superintendent, that how do I tell a parent that there was an issue when I got $20 million in the bank? We just have to work together and figure out how collectively we can offer a safe environment for our for our students and you know in the bigger cities will have a bigger role in that than the smaller cities but collectively that that's the discussion and i think that i don't think it's fair to expect that the wayne county sheriff or, or the one of the agencies in the, the region is going to take the lead on that i just i just don't think that they've got the the, the manpower to do that they certainly have the expertise part of that discussion but I think that's a discussion that we should try to build off of and yeah I, hopefully with tonight's meeting we can just be open and honest and have uh, open conversation and dialogue so I, I think that, that that's just one way to take a look at it mayor I, uh, I I agree with you 100% In fact, that was really my thinking it, to ask any of the police departments here to take on that role Frankly, it isn't fair, and they already have a full-time job. And it, and it was my thinking that the sheriff really is an expert in this type of security. But, and it was a way to start the conversation, which needs to start, I think. And I don't know what the answer is, but um, like you, I see hospitals providing their own security. They don't go to the local law enforcement to provide security within the hospitals. And like, as you say, you don't even do that at City Hall. So. And, and I don't know where that whole conversation is going to go. I don't know what the board's uh, uh, feeling is about that, but there's going to be more conversation about it. Uh, and whichever way it goes, I hope that everyone that's here tonight will, will be involved because frankly, this is the kind of discussion that needs to have everybody's opinion. Uh, but getting back to the recreation, uh, thanking the Board of Education for Marshall, I think it's the Board of Education that would like to thank you, Mayor Wild for Marshall, because the idea that this board was going to have to push over a perfectly good building, an excellent repair that the citizens have already paid for, was not a very attractive thing. And uh, I personally know none of this would happen without your relationships, and so I continue to, uh, this would just be a fantastic thing for the city, and frankly, I think it would forever change the trajectory of how people feel about Westland. It, there would just be too much, too many resources available here. And that's the kind of thing I want to make available for all the students that we serve. Because, you know, some of these students, they don't have, and, and Ms. Hines has said in so many meetings, and I think she's absolutely right, more children would be involved if their transportation wasn't an issue, if they had a way to get to these events, to these things. And that's, that's another thing the board has to, uh, has to look at. And transportation's a big expense. You know, it's, many school districts aren't providing it. Uh, because it's such a big expense. Uh, at least they're not providing it with direct employees. But it gives us the option to do things if, if we determine that that's what it will take to get kids from home onto the fields and into a coaching and mentoring environment. Dr. Weaver? Um, we've talked a lot about partnerships, uh, 
talk about recreation, law enforcement, um, superintendent has a myriad of things that he's working on uh, from his office. I think what would be beneficial for us is to do some thinking as to what is the one thing that we can all agree on to do. It, you know, the reason I think discussions end is because we look at it and we say, how are we going to do that? And we get caught up in our regular uh, things that we have to do and our sensibilities. But I think there needs to be a discussion as to what is the one thing that all of these cities can concentrate on with the school district. Do that one thing, do it well, and then move on. Okay. Mayor Racing. I just wanted to add a couple things. In recreation is great, and I wanted to, I, I think we should do those things. But I think we also got to look at, I've talked to, I talked to just recently talked to a bunch of my officers and in the city and um, our officers told me that, you know, what we're dealing with, and you're dealing with this in your schools, the mental health issues in these families. You've got homelessness in these, in our communities. And uh, there was one other, one other thing I was thinking, oh, domestic violence that is going on. If we address those things, we have police officers that have the time to be able to do more things because that's what's happening in the schools right now. And I'd say a majority of it's happening in the, your kids' families where these things are happening. And so I'm not sure how we address those things, but that's really a root cause of all these things that we're talking about, the school violence, all these things. We start trying to figure out how to address those things in our, our, our community, things are gonna change. But uh, the, the mental health issues are, are scary. You know, um, we just had a de-escalation uh, training in our, at our city and it was mentioned, you know, you've got, you can recognize these people, you know, this is gonna be the next school shooter. Tell you what, we can too. And we see that stuff. And there's people in our communities that have been getting away with things for years. And we've got issues with our county too that need to be addressed. If we want to be honest, you know, we, those things have to be addressed and how we're going to start fixing those things. Um, we, we let people get away with some stuff that they should never get away with. And so it just keeps escalating and escalating because nobody cares anymore. And we got to get people to care. And it's exciting to see that people wanted, you know, like you said, with the flag football, we, we, want, we want to get them, we got to find them what, positive avenues to get them involved in things. And maybe that helps towards those things, but we should be looking at all these things that are the problem when we're doing these things to try to help get these kids out of those situations. Um, I think it really w would make an impact. The other thing is we should be looking, I know that with the vocational center, you know, you're doing stuff with electrical and, and plumbing and all sorts of different th things that way. And I think that there's something for fire, but having relationships with the, the colleges, I mean, the how do we get workers for our communities for the future? And looking at those types of jobs that replace, because everybody's re gonna be replaced at some point <laughs> as we're trying to, 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 to put a farm system together and how we're keeping those people home. I mean, we have some officers that came from our city in our community and they love to come back to your community. But what happened if you got started getting that again? I mean, at one point, our, P, our officers and our fire department and our team, everybody lived and worked in their city. And that changed because of the law. But there's no reason you can't start getting those people excited about that kind of stuff again. We're in a, in a situation right now that law enforcement is having such a hard time to find people. Are there things that, on the educational side, that we can help preparing these kids because we need more officers. We talked about the county and the sheriff's department. They got 200 openings right now. 
you're looking for jobs. There's jobs. If you want a job in, in preparing people, we need people in those positions or our country's in big trouble, as, yeah. as we see. That's why we're having these problems, because nobody's looking at what's going on in those things. It's not important anymore. And those are things I think we should also be talking about and, and making that a priority, because those are really serious issues in the, in the long-term health of our communities. And all this stuff will work together if we we're addressing all those types of things. You know, something that's, uh, it, it doesn't seem to be a theme under any of this, but it, it affects all of it, is young people aren't getting driver's licenses. They don't, they don't have a way to get to jobs. And, uh, you know, it used to be, as we all know, something that the school district did. Uh, it, it helped kids do that. It's an expensive proposition, and plus, once they have a driver's license, there's car insurance and every transportation is a major issue. And if people are going to be free to take jobs and, and, have, and be able to take advantage of opportunities, they're going to have to be able to transport themselves. And so that's, uh, and another thing we're talking about, and when Dr. Weaver said about doing something together, I'd like to see it. it I don't know if it's even possible to have a calendar where, I know there used to be someone in the city of West Side that had a calendar of what was going on all over the area, whether it was a charity or somebody actually maintained a calendar. So, uh, so instead of at a charity event, John Albrecht could be sitting right here contributing to this conversation. So, uh, Maybe, maybe that's something that, uh, that we could work on somehow. Mr. Neal? Yeah, thank you. Uh, the city manager's suggestion that we attend uh, council meetings is probably a good one. But as we all know, one of the difficulties of attending those types of meetings is that the agenda has business that's been carved out ahead of time and leaves very little opportunity for visitors but the good thing would be that we get to know each other. And by knowing each other, then even step aside before or after the meeting and begin conversations and maybe set up meetings. Because ultimately, I think this is a great start, but ultimately we need to set up some regular meetings where we actually collaborate. And you could pick, as someone mentioned, uh, a single topic to focus on to begin with and sort of spread out from there. Then we know each other more, begin to work with each other more, and actually accomplish something and not let this die out. Going to the uh, school safety and security, uh, it's a huge topic. It's a huge topic. And as we've already mentioned, we have all different types of resources, some more, some less. But one thing we all know is that by working together, no matter what we bring to the table, how little or how much, we will accomplish something more than not working together ahead of time. Uh, I retired from the fire department uh, in 2001, before the terrorist attack on 9-11. But after the terrorist attack, the president uh, made a directive that said that all fire, all police, all emergency responders had to train, it was mandatory, you had to train on one single type of incident command system. And you were supposed to collaborate with one another and incorporate all resources in your community private resources as well as government resources so that police and fire not only knew how to work together and what they had to offer as far as communication, but they worked with city government and private industry, chemists and, and anything they could draw in to make all their responses better and better. You mentioned in Canton that 20 some departments showed up. That's wonderful and I'm hoping that they also had that unity of command, because that's part of the incident command system, to develop unity of command, a command center in which we're able to incorporate everyone to communicate effectively. They probably do at this point. Uh, but that's what we need to have for our school system as well, that they know how to work with us. I don't know how many police departments actually come into the school system and say, gee, what is your structure? Who is in charge during an emergency, and how can we communicate? And how can we figure out what best to do in any one building? I know it's getting a little bit specific, but my point is there's a lot to offer that we all have to offer. There might be nothing more than just talk, that we discuss things and settle on one way to work together in one type of incident that we can all benefit from. But then apply those same kinds of ideas of getting together and talking and sharing resources 
for every other thing that we have to offer, the school system and the cities themselves. Everybody knows that a strong school system makes a strong community. Everybody knows when people go to move into one of our communities, one of the first things they ask is, that, you know, what school system is that? And then they have an opinion about that school system. I'd like to think that they're developing a very strong opinion, a good opinion about Wayne Westland schools, and that benefits all of our communities. And it'll be only get better by this kind of conversation. I'm, uh, our superintendent is phenomenal. You know, his ability to reach out and draw in resources that we've never had before. And part of that is reaching out to all of us, all the communities, all of you as well. And I'm really happy that we're all together. Thank you. you know, having said that, I, I do not want to exclude anyone from commenting on this. And uh, I'm asking anybody in the audience, and I'm thinking about Vic Berra, that would like to come up here and uh, probably has some thoughts about this, please, please do. We, uh, we need to have a wider conversation. Tony, Mr. Spizak. <laughs> and then Vic. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Tony Spizak. I'm the Executive Director of Maintenance and Operations for the Wayne Wilson Community Schools. It's a great forum. Thanks for coming, everyone. I do want to give a shout out to our local PD and uh, FD and our departments all around all the cities. Uh, what you do not know is behind closed doors, we've been meeting with uh, fire and police and even DPWs to go over our EOPs, uh, our emergency operational plans, which we don't share with the public. Um, and we wouldn't share with you. Uh, so that's kind of the mix of what I want to talk about. These folks out here are fantastic. Um, they have worked with us on our ALICE training. They've worked with us on our operational plans. Um, they have reviewed where we go and how we act, where our command centers are going to be. And we've all done that together. So uh, Wayne, Westland, Inkster, uh, Canton, and even the Sheriff's Department came in. Um, and we meet a couple times a year as a group, and then we meet as a crisis team uh, almost weekly. It seems to be weekly anymore. Uh, so those are things you don't know. The men and women of those departments are fantastic. And I will tell you, uh, when it comes to training and when it comes to doing the things they need to do, they're on it. Um, and we're very proud of it. So that's basically why I want to Tony, say. can you tell them about the cameras, too? No. We, <laughs> Mr. Cox alluded to that we've spent quite a bit of money on surveillance or on security. Uh, a lot of that was secure entrances at our schools. Uh, so people come in uh, uh, during the day, they, they buzz in, they buzz out. We, we built a little mousetrap. Uh, we've also replaced all of our surveillance systems. Uh, the local PD uh, have access to that. So uh, if something's going on in real time from their command center at their police stations, they can log in, they can see what's happening in those hallways and in those areas that have cameras. Uh, we're also looking at putting an uh, app on their phones so they'll have access from their telephones or from their, from their, their, their computers. There's a lot going on with technology that really we don't share because there's a, there's a reason why we don't share it all. Um, but we are doing those things. Um, and I do like the idea of having one command center. The unfortunate thing is we are in four different cities, and it's tough. And we know how resources are. But when it comes to safety of students, it doesn't matter. You folks are there, and we appreciate that. So, and I went to a council meeting. Was it last month, uh, Mayor Well? I haven't been to one since 1978. <laughs> um, and I will tell you folks, I get up every morning at 4 a.m. and I'm in my office at 5 a.m. and I stay here on these late nights. Um, and you all do the same thing. It is tough to go to council meetings uh, when you go into your own board meetings. But if the board members want to rotate and go to council meetings, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> so thank you for your time. Thank you, Tony. I knew I should have gone with Dick. Here he comes. We'll wait, Vic. I think this meeting is about a year late. Uh, we've already started many of the initiatives that have been talked about uh, between Mayor's Compassionate City Committee, for example, and the school district, recognizing our young people for acts of compassion. I think we are starting to make a powerful statement together to families that, I just want to stop and say this. For the first, I've been in Westland for over 60 years. I'm 62 years old and I lived my entire life here. And in the last 
few years, for the first time, I see leaders across my community, both on the city government side and on the school administration side, that get it. And the, what I mean by they get it is you cannot have a strong community without a strong commu community school district. And the school district side leadership needs to understand that to have a strong school district, you have to have a strong community government. And I see that among everybody here. And we're already starting to make those inroads on a lot of ways. One thing I haven't heard today, I've heard a lot of great ideas, but one thing I haven't heard today is volunteerism. Why are we not tapping into this pent up energy within our community by driving a volunteer effort? And I think that needs to be driven at the school district level. You have the audience of the young people. You have the counseling mechanisms that are in touch with their family issues, what's going on. They can select individuals for opportunity for community service, but there has to be a mechanism there for that energy to go to. And I think if you want to make an investment in a department, for example, Dr. Dignan, that might be a good place to look because we're dealing with troubled families, we're dealing with troubled students, we're dealing with all the law enforcement elements that surround all of these negative behaviors. And oftentimes what I found out growing up is these kids just needed a place to vent that energy. And if we provide a positive pathway for that energy to flow, we're more likely to get better outcomes. So there's one thing I want to bring to this meeting. Let's talk about how we get a volunteer mechanism going at the school level. I know Mayor Wild will quickly dispatch me on his behalf to support these type of efforts, uh, and I'd be glad to join you. So, thank you. It'd be just like the volunteers that built the pyramids, Vic. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, Chief. Thanks for being here, Chief. It's one of just one other suggestion when we talk about the student safety, and something to consider is if we tally up all the numbers of the students that we have in the Wayne Westland School District and all the employees, that number is the same as some small cities. And so I really think that a suggestion I would lay out is that we, we dedicate some money in the school budget for school safety, which would include maybe a director of security for the school, the school district. That way that person then can help work on some security measures for each school, maybe security guards for each school, the police department then, where, like we said, we do a ton of training with the schools and, and, and just not to go off topic, but the relationship I've got with the superintendent is I've never had such a great relationship with a, with a with the school district in my entire career. But for us to then have the ability to work directly with somebody, the director of security, I think that streamlines the training for your schools, the training for the district, um, and it just kind of gives us the ability to oversee. So when we talk about a commitment, that's what a suggestion I would throw out there. Let's, you know, have the school district commit some money for a, a school safety plan or a school district safety plan so we can maybe hire a director of security for the district that way we can implement a lot of these things on a more refined basis. Thank you very much, Chief. Yes, Thank you. Supervisor. Thank you. Just kind of jumping on top of a couple, what a couple people said. So right now, um, I'll just start with recreation. What a good conduit is, I mean, you talk about government and schools, but you have a third leg there, which is the um, private institutions. And some things that we talked about, our Canton Community Foundation is now partnering with local foundations. Um, they're we're working with Westland and Plymouth, and they're calling it the Local Impact Alliance. I think they're also working with Wayne. And what the good part about that is, is that's where your umbrella is, where you can put a lot of this. They're looking at how we can bring students in to um, get jobs, do internships, like many have talked about. We also talked about, they came to visit me the other day, we talked about transportation. And we all have our little sets, you know, um, Nankin Transport is one of them, but in Canton, that only transports seniors and disabled individuals. However, there's another thing that we have here, which is, um, you know, our car dealerships. Um, I know that when I, I'm coming from Ford, whenever we needed shuttles anywhere, we hired retirees and we were shuttled everywhere. And I think it'd be great to form a partnership with some of these um, dealerships and see if they'd be willing to provide transportation for some of these students for internships. It's gonna be heavily logistics. You really have to get into that and you have to have somebody dedicated to that. 
but instead of putting your child on an Uber, which you, you know, could be safe or not, talk to the dealership. See if you can bring them in to do some internships, take the kids where they need to go. You know, that's a safe way to do it. There's a lot of retirees out there that are doing some of these shuttles. Um, getting back into, we also have internships in Canton, definitely our leisure services, as Mayor Wild spoke about. We look for volunteers all the time. I know we've had 100 short these last couple summers of volunteers and kids just working. We have a lot of jobs for kids, and we know they can't get there, but this is one way to get them there. So, you know, see if the dealerships can help us with that. Um, getting in, back into school safety. So my niece, um, Successful, was successful in suicide probably about three years ago at the high school, uh, the, the Salem High School. And I, um, it was devastating. And we, um, we really approached the schools at the time where she was going there and saying, how can we do this? Because of the issues that we're talking about with safety, they're just not, you know, the, like you said, the security. I think, like we heard here, that the police agencies are working together. But this is actually what Mayor Razor was talking about also. It starts in the homes. So what we've done is we've embedded social workers in our police stations and our police. And that's working with the homes because our police are seeing more and more mental illness in the homes, domestic violence, mental illness. So we're working trying to, we brought a um, social worker in last August and two months she had 261 cases already. And that's not just the police going to the homes, that's people reaching out saying I need help. Um, so they're having trouble finding people that can help them, psychologists, psychiatrists. That, that, there's a shortage in that resource area also. Another thing we did is we started a program called OK to Say, and I know that's a national program. But it's been helpful with um, if a student sees somebody that is another student or teacher or staff member that's struggling with um, suicide tendencies or even violent tendencies. That's actually what led to the lockdown in December at the school, where students, it's okay to say they made an anonymous tip of something that they thought they saw. So you've got to work on something like this school safety on that level with your communities, you know, with social workers. Um, we've tried to embed more social workers into the schools, which I think that's a big shortage in all of our school districts. We really need that. Um, these okay to say programs where the kids know that it's okay to tell. They know a friend's struggling. They know maybe a friend's family is struggling. So even though you see a child at school that's struggling with something, what's happening at home? You know, domestic violence, trauma, hunger, you know, loss of jobs, you know, things like that are happening. So some these programs are important to bring, I think the, um, the public-private partnerships are important there. Bring in the car dealerships, bring in, um, you know, how can we bring in more social workers? How can we get this help? So a lot of what you're talking about is multi-tiered, and I think of partnerships all the way would help. But these community foundations, camp community foundations, we started the local impact alliances partnering with some of our communities. is a good conduit, I think, for some of what you're talking about. Appreciate that. Mayor Racy? Yeah, um, what the city manager just mentioned, we had visioning sessions in our community, and it might be something, we do something like that with the community to try to get what they're seeing to try to help us with this and do some of that and, and engage them in all of this. I think that that might be helpful. I also wanted to mention you said the car dealerships. So SMART is starting a this hub thing where they're going to be using minivans and competing against really um, the Uber stuff. And it's going to be so much, it's like five, six bucks to get a ride, it, but it's going to be zoned. But if we work together with them, there may be ways to be able to figure out that transportation and make it to where it's affordable. And somebody down over here is actually on that board. <laughs> so I might be able to help you. But uh, as a connection to that, but uh, that, that's, I, when you said that, I just said I should make you aware. Thank you, Mayor. Ms. May? Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you all for being here. One of the things, as I'm sitting here and I'm listening, um, a couple of things. One thing that stood out is I really like the idea of a common calendar and just our community knowing because we um, are supporting so many different communities, so each community kind of knowing what's going on, especially for the events that are taking place for kids. I think that's really powerful, and I think that's a nice way to show that there is a collaboration and connection with the um, cities as well as with the school districts. 
So that the common calendar is showing the events for school districts as well as the events that are taking place in the city. The other piece that I'd like to um, suggest or I would like to see, I like the idea of the internship, but I also would like to see us talk about a mentoring program. Because when you talk about what's going on in the home and when we're trying to support kids in the school, but then we send them back home. And so it's this, this back and forth, back and forth, and there isn't the stability that's necessarily, necessarily needed for students. So I would love to see us to be, begin to be able to have some type of conversation around some type of mentoring program, and if that's something that we can do with our, um, in combination with our city. The other piece is, um, and Dave, you and I kind of talked about this sidebar, and that was the idea that um, the chief of police just brought up about us having a director of security within our district and how important that is, and having that ability to streamline and having that one a point person within the district. And so that is another piece that I think that we could um, begin to have some conversations around. So those are just one of the three of the things that I'd like to have. I'm glad you say that, said that, Kimberly. By the way, I see the police chief of the city of Wayne. Thank you, sir. Uh, because, you know, there's, there's, there's the potential violence, but there's also the violence that goes on every day with all the emotions that we have in a school building, and, and it affects how young people learn, and it also affects the instructors and our staff. And, and when, the, when the chief came up and talked about that, uh, we've been talking about that. We think that, you know, I, I just keep thinking every hospital has a security. Uh, department. They have a head of security. They have security people. And I don't think anybody feels that two school resource officers in our school district is enough. I mean, they, they all it really is doing is setting them up for failure because how could they be expected really to provide any, any security uh, with all of the people? So I'm glad that you're eager to have that conversation this May. Anybody else? Uh, uh, like to make a comment or at this time? Mr. Cox. Mr. Buckaloo? Yeah. Um, Do you still want to talk even though Miss May has already spoken? It's a little difficult to follow her, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I'll, I'll get past it. Okay. So I haven't heard anything at all tonight that I, that I thought was a bad idea. Everything is good. But the relationship uh, between the communities, the municipal, uh, municipalities, and the school district, it's, it's a complicated one. We all are about service, but the goals, they, they're different. They may overlap from time to time, but they're different. When we talked, and, and earlier we were talking about assets and we were talking about resources. But for the school district, and I'm sure for the, for the city governments as well, those funds are siloed. Here's a chunk of money that you can use for X. And over here's a check, uh, a, a sum of money that you can use just for Y. And if we try to commingle those things, we're gonna be wearing striped suits. We have to be careful about how we spend our money. We got off the, the, the fiscal side of that and we started talking about ways that we could bolster uh, well, the mission of each other. And I think we came up with some really good ideas. Police and fire have always been a part of, of the Wayne West Line School District. Even back in the days when we were the Wayne School District, police and fire was always something that was important to us. And we worked closely with those people. We should continue to do that and build on that. We certainly, if we have the will at the school district, we certainly have the resources at this moment to look into a director of public safety. That's something that we could really build on. And I think that that might, in, in this era of Oxford, that might be something worth taking a closer look at. There are already some examples of cooperation between uh, uh, the city of Westland, and I suspect the city of Wayne and Camp and Inkster as well. Uh, Recently, uh, in, in the spring of the year, there was a coordinated effort between the Westland Historical Society and, and Stevenson Middle School. They put on a fantastic presentation. It was good for the kids, and there was a big turnout of people from the community. That's one feather in our cap. 
recently uh, through the good uh, offices of uh, Mayor Weil. Uh, City Hall was made available for the Wayne Westland Foundation to hold a fundraising event, and those funds went to provide small grants to teachers in our district. Something that didn't get said tonight, I think, has to do with tax base and with uh, foundation grants. Anything that we can do together to bring people to our community is going to have a wonderful impact on the financial uh, abilities of our district. More people in our communities means a stronger tax base. More students in our schools means more money from the state. And when we each have more money, we can take on more, more things that provide service to the members of our community. I'll repeat, I haven't heard anything tonight that was a bad idea. Some of these things are going to be more easily achieved, and I think we should continue to pursue, even if it's just little things. Any little thing that we can do to work together is going to be a step in the right direction. And if we get that one great thing that somebody was talking about, something that we can concentrate on, that will make a big difference, that would be fantastic too. But whether we start small or start big, we certainly need to continue this conversation. Uh, this was a worthwhile week evening, I think. Thank you, Mr. Buckaloo. Mayor Racy? Just real quick. Um, Vic brought it up, but I think it's a really good idea. The volunteer coordinator, I think that that could be very important. I know our community, it would, it would make a huge difference in some of our park cleanups, the different things that we're doing, because that's where we're, we're short in resources. But if we, we have some major issues, but if we had a, a chunk of people that could be a, a, address that, we could make change very quickly. And I think you guys have the ability to make that happen, um, if that's something you guys are interested in doing. But that could really impact our community greatly. This is um, Mrs. Hines <coughs> speaking. And I think, too, with the volunteers, we need to add the faith-based faith -based community as well, because they do a lot in our community with help from a volunteer. So maybe we can add them to the table when we have another meeting. Good suggestion. Hey, Mike. Council Pro Tem, Mike Landau. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Council President Pro Tem, Mike Landau, City of Westland. Very excited to be back in my alma mater with uh, Melanie Hines, go Wayne. Um, a lot of great ideas tonight. I share what Mr. Bucklow just said. Um, great ideas, I didn't hear one bad idea, but I did love the Director of Public Safety idea. I understand you guys also were allocated ARPA money. I think that would be a great allocation for some of your ARPA money. Um, if you ever want to do a joint session with City Council, we'd love to have you. I know sometimes your board meetings might fall on the same day as ours, but we've been known to do um, off City Council meeting nights, meaning our meetings are first and third Monday of every month, but we've done Tuesday meetings or Wednesday meetings um, to make that happen. So we'd love to have you guys at City Hall to do a, a joint session. I know we've done that with the mayor, with the economic development director, and our planning commission, and our TIFA board, EDA board. So I think that'd be a great session to have the city council and the board of education together. Um, last thing, um, you talked about sharing a community calendar. Um, we could also share programming. I know our cable department, we have a lot of programming on there, but sometimes he's itching for things. I grew up watching the Wayne Memorial John Glenn game, uh, the Comets Meteors game. I know that's not the schools, but you know what I, you, you get where I'm going. So you guys could have some stuff that you want to share, get it over to our media department. Maybe we can get you some of our stuff out to uh, your media department as well. So I think that's a good partnership as well. Thanks again. Thanks, Mike. That's a, that's a great suggestion, actually. Um, and I appreciate that you're telling us how to spend our money. Uh, it's a good one. Anyone else? I'd like to say one thing. Um, I'm actually blessed to be the Director of Economic Development for the City of Inkster and to work on the school board because what I've been doing is with the City of Inkster, I have a unique situation with them, you know, having the schools dissolved. So you have like Wayne Westland, Romulus, 
um, Westwood, Taylor, and you have American International Academy. So what I've been doing as a director over there is trying to bring all the school districts together because this community is only six square miles, and we have to, you know, get rid of that narrative that they don't have schools. They have some of the best schools in that city, and they have a choice. So we, Dr. Dignan, he's actually went to a city council meeting and you know presented over in uh, Inkster. Maybe we'll do that in other districts as well in Wayne to let them know the different programs that we're having. Because what I do is I definitely get all the information. Like I go out like to Westland, I go to Wayne, and I get the information I actually bring to City Hall. And what I'm working on is a, uh, like a education corner, what I want to put in City Hall. And that way people in the city can see the different um, school districts and what they have to offer. Because um, a lot of times the information doesn't really get out to everyone. So I definitely want to work with all the cities and can't, you know, just getting that information out to the community. So it's pretty nice being in both seats a little bit. It's kind of hard with the council meetings and school board meetings, but it's just really nice having that type of uh, reach to the community. You know, and, uh, what Council President Pro Tem Landau said, I think, I think it's important for the citizens to see that relationship too. And especially with the school district, if you don't have a child or a grandchild in the school district, you probably have no idea what the inside of our buildings look like. Why would you? And you don't know what's going on in the school district. I think it would be helpful for people. It would be helpful for people to see the positive relationship that exists, the positive working relationship that exists. What do you think? I'm gonna <laughs> kick him out of here? Yeah, Tony's gonna shut off the lights in a second. Does, uh, does anyone have anything that they'd like to add? I think it, at this stage, yes, please. Come up and introduce yourself so we can tease you while you're on your way back to your seat. Sounds great. Uh, Jody Wollett from the Wayne Public Library. Um, I just wanted to add, you know, all of the libraries in these communities have a plethora of resources for children and families and any help that the school district can give in getting the word out. I know we send out um, information in emails or you include information from libraries in your weekly emails to parents but between Westland, Wayne, Canton, and Inkster, there's probably something at one of those libraries every day for parents and children to participate in that's totally free. And um, you know, any, any help in getting the word out about the programs that we already offer um, would be great, and we'd love to work with you. Wouldn't it be nice if they could turn on one of the channels and see a rolling list of all of the activities going on at the library the way it used to be a channel guide on cable? Remember how channel guide used to exist? You could go to that guide and hit it and know what's going to happen. Anyway, I wouldn't know what to say the next meeting or the next move would be other than to say that I want to thank Dr. Dignan for uh, recommending that we do this, for putting this together because we need to start somewhere. So. Uh, with that, we'll move to the next uh, item on our agenda if nobody has any further comments. And uh, okay, this is a portion of the meeting reserved for citizens who wish to address the board on things that are not on the agenda. And since you don't, doesn't look like anyone wants to do that, we will just move to review and recommendations of the members of the Board of Education. Mr. Buckaloo. I'm good, thank you. Ms. May. I'm good, thank you. Ms. Hines. I'd like to thank everyone who came out to this meeting today. Um, in terms of internships, the city of Inkster, we had a in summer internship program. Um, we had money from Rashida Tlaib to help get our youth. So actually one of my youth created this flyer. We're hosting a, a, one of our first um, innovation technology skill trades job fairs in partnership with the city of Inkster, the Inkster Chamber, and the Lena uh, Public Library. Um, it's gonna be this Wednesday, September 14th. Um, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Booker T. Dozier Recreation Complex, 2025 Middle Belt Road, Inkster, Michigan, 4141. This was an amazing event. Um, I got my inspiration from Dr. Dignan when we had our career tech uh, fair that was wonderful in the fall. Um, I was able to get over 50 companies to come out. So I got like really good companies. I got the, uh, the Carpenter Mill Rights, uh, IBW, uh, Bricklayers. Um, I got some schools. I got the William D. Ford. And I was able to involve all the five schools in Inkster, like the Westland, I got all of them. Westland, uh, Westwood, Romulus, Taylor. Um, I met the superintendent for Taylor for the first time after eight years, so I was excited, just bridging the gap. I even have the city of Westland as well. 
coming out there to support us. But this is important. And what I want to do, I'm really big at networking and bringing people together. So this is a nice place, open to the whole community. You don't have to live in these, just all the families in the area. So um, like people that are hiring. And the nice thing too, like with the police department, um, is having people in your own community. You know what I'm saying? That's what's so nice about that, being able to work for you all. So um, I'm really excited about it. So I have some flyers on the table. I'll be putting out on my Facebook page. And um, thank you guys for coming out. We really do appreciate that. Thank you, Ms. Hines. Dr. Weaver? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'd just like to thank everyone again for showing up. And that's how business gets done when people show up. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Weaver. Chief Neal? No further comment. Thank you. Um, I'm going to give you, I'm going to change the agenda around a little bit, uh, Dr. Dignan, to give you the last word. Yeah, I just want to uh, thank everybody for coming out, uh, especially uh, the mayors and, and then some of our uh, public officials. I think coming together, I think a lot of the things that have been laid out tonight that we can take little bites out of. And I agree, I think the more regular our communication can be and consistent it can be, by coordinating everybody's efforts together, I, I think we can do some special things in our community. So I'm, I'm gonna end it there, but I, I do wanna thank everybody for taking the time out of their busy schedules to be here this evening. Thank you, everyone. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Support. Moved by Ms. Hines, support by Dr. Weaver. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, no? The ayes have it, we're adjourned. Thank you, everyone.